Get your Bible. And take that pew Bible if you don't have your own. We're going to spend everything in Matthew chapter 13 tonight. We're going to get, not going to get outside of it because I want us to look at eight parables that Jesus taught. And the scripture reading that was given, uh, uh, when he'd given the first parables, the disciples came to him and said, why are you telling these stories? Why, why do you speak in parables? And he says, parables are designed so that those who desire to find truth will see it readily. But to that individual who, ha who has no desire to understand truth, truth will be hidden from him. And we're going to talk about that as we look at these eight parables tonight because we need to understand parables. Jesus often taught in parables. In fact, the Bible says in one place that without parables he did not speak unto them. Now what is a parable? Well, the definition of a parable, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. I learned that. I learned that before I was in junior high. And I have never found a better definition of what a parable is. You look at it and analyze the, the word para means beside. The word ball in the Greek means to toss like you toss a ball. And it literally means to toss something alongside another. And so here's this heavenly truth. And so that those who want to understand the truth, Jesus taught an earthly story. And if you're able to read that earthly story and see the spiritual application of it, then you will be able to understand what parables are all about if you're desirous of looking at that. And that's our purpose in tonight's lesson. We're going to look at eight parables that nobody would be able to understand unless they're looking for truth. In fact, in this same chapter, down in verse 16 and 17, he says to these apostles who's asked about well, why do you speak in parables? He said, so that those who desire, those who have, more will be given to them. If a man doesn't have that desire, he'll lose, it, even, lose the things that have been given to him. Listen to what he says. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. I want you to understand that because we live when we live, Jesus said we're blessed more than David, and than Abraham, and that any of the Old Testament prophets that were there, we're blessed more than them, for they desired to understand, but they were not able to understand it. In a parallel concept in Luke chapter 10, he says that there were kings with all of the education that they had and all the wisdom that they had. They longed to be able to understand what you understand. And they were not able to understand it. I want you to, under, I want you to be, leave here tonight appreciative of the fact at how blessed we are in understanding the eight parables found in Matthew chapter 13. Let's take a quick look at all eight of these parables. The first parable in Matthew chapter 13 is the parable of a man who went out to sow. Jesus is there, and this instead of being the Sermon on the Mount, this is that occasion whenever there's the multitude that's there, and it's the sermon in a boat. And he takes the boat, and evidently it's, evidently it's the Sea of Galilee, and he pushes off from shore, and the people are gathered there on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. And there is that place that some who have gone to Bible lands believe that's the very place they've been. That there, there is almost like an amphitheater that is there, and so a man's voice would carry readily over the waters, and the multitudes would be able to hear. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, Jesus said, a sower went out to sow. And then he describes the seed as it falls. Verse 4, some by the wayside, some on the stony ground, some among thorns. Verse 7, and some on good soil, and he yielded a crop a hundred, uh, 30, 60, and a hundredfold. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
What's that all about? Imagine that you, you, this was the first time you ever heard this story. And there were people there who never heard it. And Jesus is trying to give them an understanding of spiritual truth with an earthly story. And when you got to the end of it, if you'd gone back home and your wife had said, uh, well, where'd you go? well, I heard this man, Jesus. What did he talk about? He talked about farming. That's all there is in this parable. If all you have is the earthly story, it's rather ironic that the disciples came to him after he said, Blessed are your ears and your eyes, for they hear and they see. They came to him and they said, Explain this parable to us. Jesus said in, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 13, whenever they said, explain this parable to us, he said, you don't understand this one? If you don't understand this parable, you will not be able to understand the parables of Jesus. And so, the Lord explains this kingdom parable. Look as he says, here's the meaning, verse 18, of the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, you know what that is, don't you? Abraham didn't know it. David didn't know it. Those disciples that were there that had been with Jesus and followed him around had heard him talk about the kingdom, but their whole concept of what the kingdom was was an earthly kingdom. And he says, you need to understand, here's a parable about the kingdom. And it concerns the word of the kingdom, which an individual, whenever he un does not understand it, the wicked one comes like those birds came and took away the seed that was thrown there on the wayside soil. The wicked one comes and snatches the word of God out of their heart. Every time I preach, I think, I wonder who's here that's like that wayside soil. They're there. The Word of God is living and active and could penetrate the heart of that individual, but Satan is ready there to steal the Word of God away from them. What's the kingdom like? You know what this parable's all about, don't you? It's the story of a man going out and sowing the Word of God, and there are four kinds of hearts. There's the wayside heart that's hardened. There is that stony ground that is shallow, and immediately people hear it, they'll embrace it, but when hard times come, they fall away. You know this parable. The thorny ground, the thorns representing the cares that will choke the good seed out of our lives, and then the good ground, and that is that individual has a ready heart to hear it. You know that parable. You hear the earthly story, and you're able to sense the heavenly meaning. And Jesus said, understand this parable. Because you see, this parable is a parable that describes the nature of the kingdom. They didn't have any idea what it was like. And when Jesus had explained it to them, they probably did not begin to comprehend that which you already easily understood. And it's a part of your understanding. Blessed are your eyes, for you see the parable of the sower. Blessed are your ears, because you hear the parable of the story and you understand the nature of the kingdom. What's the church like? A man going out and sowing the seed. This whole concept of a premillennial earthly kingdom does not fit into any parable in Matthew chapter 13. Jesus is trying in what takes, and listen to this, three and a half minutes to read this one sermon that Jesus preached is the profound truth that deals away with the, any, any concept of an earthly kingdom. And so Jesus explained this parable to them. Then there's a second parable that he taught 
in beginning in verse 24. Of a man, or the kingdom of heaven, being like a man who sowed good seed in the field. Now the disciples did not understand what this parable was all about. And so in verse 37 he says, That man who sows the good seed is the Son of God, or the Son of Man. And the field in which he sows this seed is the... What's the kingdom of heaven like? If you just heard the parables of the tares without, without ever understanding anything other than an earthly story, it's a man who went out and sowed seed and the enemy came in at night and sowed bad seed. It's tares, it's called. Weeds, another description of it. And they went out and tried to decide, should they pull the weeds out or let them grow together? And so Jesus explains this parable. You know this parable, don't you? Look down at verse 37 where he says, That field in which, these were, in which the, sea, the Son of Man sowed the seed, the word of the kingdom, is the world. And the good seed represents the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the son of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest at the, is at the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they'll gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, those who practice lawlessness and cast them into a furnace of fire, there will be the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He has an ear to hear, let him hear. You know this parable, don't you? Here's a parable like the first one talks about the nature of the kingdom. This parable describes the enemy of the kingdom. Now we know the rest of the story. We know what's going to happen in the rest of the lives of these apostles and how they're going to be the hands and the feet of Jesus that go out and sow all of this seed. And Jesus is trying to prepare them ahead of time to let them know that while they're sowing the seed, the devil writes side by side with the sowing of the good seed. There'll be the sowing by Satan. Of that which looks somewhat like the good seed and they will grow together until the final harvest when the angels come and separate the two. You understand that parable? You understand that the kingdom of heaven is like that son of man who sows good seed and produces sons of the kingdom? And there is the devil who sows bad seed and they look somewhat alike, but they're going to be able to continue together until the harvest. You understand that? Blessed are your ears and blessed are your eyes because you understand that which prophets and kings and, and, and righteous men have tried to understand. And these are the only two of the eight parables Jesus explains. Your own, your own to understand the rest of these. Look in verse 31. Another parable put he forth unto them. And this is the parable of the mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all of the seeds. But when it's grown, it's greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. What's the kingdom of heaven like? This parable describes the growth of the kingdom. Does it not? It's like this tiny mustard seed, unlike any mustard seed that we know of growing in our, our area, but the tiny seed that was planted over there would become almost like a tree. And Jesus said, when the Son of Man goes and sows that seed, what you're going to see is to see the growth and the spread of this kingdom just like that tiny mustard seed grows and spreads. You understand that? Blessed are your ears 
And blessed are your eyes, for you see and hear that which all, every Old Testament prophet could not understand. There's a fourth parable. Another parable he spake unto them, this is, this is in verse 33, the parable of the leaven. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven. They had no idea what was about to happen. And Jesus said, if you want to know what's about to happen in your lifetime and what you're about to see, then look at a woman as she, as she puts this tiny bit of leaven into, into the bread and that tiny little particle of leaven spreads. That's the influence of leaven. This parable is about the influence the kingdom has on this world. Do you understand that? Blessed are your ears, for they hear. And blessed are your eyes, for they see that which righteous men and prophets and kings desire to understand. And they couldn't understand it. Had they heard the parables of Jesus, they would not have understand, understood that which you readily understand. Look at the fifth parable. This time, it is the parable of the hidden treasure. Look at it in verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid, and for great joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. We probably don't understand this as readily as they would because they had not the banking facilities that we have. And so treasures had to be hidden. But a man might hide a treasure. He may forget where he'd hidden it. He may forget that he'd even hidden it. Or maybe he died. And a man finds that treasure hidden in the field. And he t so values that treasure that's hidden in the field that he invests everything that he has to be a part of the kingdom. That's not hard to understand, is it? And Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like that treasure that's hidden in the field and when you found it, that's when you became a Christian. And you've invested all that you have, all of your energies. You understand that? Blessed are your eyes. And blessed are your ears. For they see and hear that which no Old Testament prophet would have ever been able to understand. How blessed we are to be able to read that and immediately grasp the meaning, the meaning of it. Look at the sixth parable in this. It's the pearl of great price. This is one of the parables that we have not read carefully. Sometimes people read this parable and say, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus says in verse 45, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. The kingdom is not like the pearls. The kingdom is like the man seeking the pearls. Then he says, who when he has found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. Totally different concept. Look at the difference. Verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Verse 45, the kingdom of the heaven is like a man. But this man is out looking for goodly pearls and he finds one pearl of great price and he invests all that he has. Invests all that he has to gain that pearl. Let me ask you, the kingdom of heaven is looking for something. It's looking for something of great value. Do you know what's the most valuable thing on this earth? 
What is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know what the kingdom of heaven is? It's the body of Jesus trying to find pearls of great price. And you've got to open up a lot of oysters to find good pearls. And you've got to teach a lot of people before you find that individual looking for truth. But whenever you find that individual looking for truth, you invest all of the energies that you have to gain that pearl of great price. The kingdom is like that man. And so this parable, the parable of the man seeking goodly perils, is a parable that describes the spread of the kingdom. Look at the seventh parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47. The New King James has the word dragnet, but because of an old television program, I like the old King James that says it's like a fishnet. The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full they drew to the shore and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessel and threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. What's the kingdom of heaven like? It's like a fishnet that goes out and collects all different kinds of fish. And sometimes they are good fish in the, in the net, and sometimes they are worthless fish. This parable describes the citizens in the kingdom of heaven. You and I need to understand that as the gospel reaches out, it will bring in individuals who may be hypocritical and may be insincere in their lives. And Jesus said to these apostles, this kingdom is about to come and you need to understand that that's what's going to happen. The dragnet, the fishnet is going to gather in all kinds of fish. Don't you worry about it. At the end of the age, there'll be a separation from those inside the net and those outside the net. There's almost described here in this parable the hypocrites that are in the church, brought into the kingdom, but they're not in there with all their heart and their soul. Do you understand that parable? If you do, you understand something that not one Old Testament prophet, not one righteous man, not one wise king understood. If you understand this parable of the dragnet, blessed are your eyes and blessed are your ears, for they see and hear that which no one was able to understand. And then there's that final parable in Matthew 13. Every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of God is like a householder who brings out of his treasures things old and things new. We have somewhat trouble understanding this, this parable of the householder, because we don't understand the place of the scribes. They were the copyists of the law. They were those individuals who took the old manuscripts and made copies of the new manuscripts. And they knew the laws. You read about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the rulers and the scribes. The scribes were those who had devoted their lives reading the Bible. What's this, what does this have to do with the kingdom? It has to do with the nature of the teachers in the kingdom. Those scribes, students of the Word, who know the Word of God, they're like a man who goes to his cupboard. The feast is ready to be prepared, and perhaps even more than the feast, maybe gifts to be given. But he goes to his cupboard, and in that cupboard there are some really delicious foods to be eaten, treasures to be had. When I was a young preacher... 
I used to think that I had to come up with something new and exciting in every sermon. But that's not the case. Truths that I learned when I was young, like what is a parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, that's in the treasure. That's in, that's in the household's treasures. And so in preaching and in teaching, we go to that place where the spiritual treasures are found and we find old truths and we find new truths. Jesus took three and a half minutes to present this lesson. I've taken 29 or 28 minutes so far to discuss. I want to ask you, how blessed do you feel about knowing Matthew 13? I'd rather live this side of the coming of Jesus and the cross of Jesus than to have lived at any other time on this earth. Because Jesus said, Blessed, Dan, are your eyes, for you see these things. Blessed are your ears, for you hear these things, and you're hearing and understanding things that not one person in the Old Testament understood. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 said, in reference to those Old Testament worthies, that I had not seen nor ear heard, neither had it entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love Him, but God has revealed them unto us. We're blessed above all others. I sometimes wonder what heaven is like, and I just wonder if when we get to heaven, we'll be able to sit down with Isaiah and explain the book of Isaiah to him. I don't know if that'll be the case or not, but you know how blessed we are. Thank God that we understand the nature of the kingdom. And may we all be good students as we come to the Word of God. There's an entrance way into that kingdom, and we all need to be aware of that entrance that, that is there. And the path there is that begins with faith. Then there is that decision called repentance in which we make up our minds to turn our lives around and then to confess our faith in Jesus and to be baptized. Having been taught the words of the Spirit, we are immersed in water. And Jesus said, that's the new birth, born of water and of the Spirit. And you enter into the kingdom of heaven. And except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he'll not enter the kingdom of heaven, he'll not see the kingdom. Have you done that? The Lord says to those of us who are Christian, don't you dare give up. You be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. How can this church help you go to heaven? Won't you let it be known by coming to the front right now, as together we stand and sing. Will you come?